Today, the Committee of Economics and Finance in the Assembly of Albania approved the bill submitted by the Ministry of Finance for the prohibition of gambling and sports betting following the 31st of December 2018. Following the call from the Prime Minister yesterday, the Socialist Party dismissed 11 branch chairs today for failing to meet the required objectives and for being disconnected from their territories. Father Gerard Fischler was commemorated with a symbolic activity in Leja for the 147th anniversary of his birth, with the Deputy Mayor adding that the activities for Fischler should be on a national scale. Good evening, it's 6 o'clock on Tuesday the 23rd of October 2018. Welcome to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Alexandra and I'm here to bring you the day's top stories from across the country translated into English. The Parliamentary Economy Committee approved the draft law on closing gambling points on the 31st of December 2018, as well as suspending all licence requirements. The draft law entered into an accelerated procedure in Parliament and on Thursday it is expected to be voted upon with some changes. Finance Minister Arben Ahmetai said the bill stops the activity of electronic casinos as well as sports betting. The government has an official position on December 31, 2018 for the closure of casinos, sports betting, sport and animal racing, bingo halls and online gambling, said Arben Ahmetai. The Commission also approved two additional proposals by the MP Ervin Bushati. It is a supplement to Article 1 of the law that states the organisation and development pass to the state, which is in line with a variant discussed earlier this week. I want to believe that all these people who are here and all those others who are not in the hall today will be on Thursday in the Assembly of the Republic of Albania. We have seen the maximum possible criminal pressure applied to certain segments who administer gambling activities over these past days. Yet here the MPs remain unstopped and they deserve respect for not succumbing to such pressure and applying their vote in the Assembly Hall, said Erion Brauche. The proposal for banning audiovisual sports betting advertising and written media was also approved. A day after the Socialist Group expressed its negative consideration for some directors who are not working properly, Prime Minister Eddie Rama collected the lead of the party to analyse their work. In a meeting lasting more than one hour, the Socialist Party's leadership announced via Elisa Spiropali the dismissal of 11 branch chairs for non-fulfilment of objectives and for disconnection from the territory. At today's meeting, party leaders of the Socialist Party in the territory were dismissed. Unjustified delays in party reorganisation have been observed. In in the membership campaign and in local branches, there is a disconnection from some territories. Political leaders are asked to increase the presence on the ground and in the circles they cover politically, especially in opposition-led municipalities where there is a great degradation of the relationship of local government with citizens. We have no opposition and we cannot expect the emergence of the opposition to put our finger on the wounds of local government, even centrally where it needs interference. It is important that in parallel with the government of the country, we also work with our great political family in the territory, said Elisa Spiropali. Some of the party members who have been fired were in areas such as Delvina, Tsarik, Selenitsa, Memaliai and Devoli. The headship also asked political leaders of the circles to be more present in the local territories they cover, especially in the territories where the Democrats rule. This meeting was called two days after the arrest of former prison police director Arben Chuko and former MP Arben Ndoka. Democratic Party Chair Lul Zimbasha appeared before the prosecution regarding the investigation into the millions of euro that entered into the country concealed in a Toyota Yaris. Lul Zimbasha accuses the prosecution of being captured by the crime led by Prime Minister Eddie Rama. The prosecution has requested my testimony regarding the investigation they are conducting into the release of state secrets regarding the criminal offence of introducing money gained from criminal activity using a Toyota Yaris. This action proves my public statements, my public denunciations of, of Talon Bala's involvement in giving political guarantees for illegal trafficking of dirty money from crime are true. Today, I want to say that two more MPs from the Socialist Party, Ulsi Manya and Jorgis Trubia, are involved in this affair, stated Luzim Basha after leaving the prosecution. I came willingly to testify to Albanians that the investigation system has degraded. Rather than investigating who stands behind criminal transactions and who guarantees these criminal acts, they are treating it as an extrusion of state secrecy. The prosecution has sufficient evidence to immediately request Talon Bala's arrest and to demand decades of imprisonment 
Vasimir Tahiri, Damian Jignuri, Vanjush Dako and Shazim Seydini, declared Basha. In his reaction, the chair of the SP parliamentary group, Talon Bala, continues to allege that Lulzim Basha is simply defaming. I'm sorry that today's chair of the Democratic Party is a man who gets up at 11 a.m. and speaks with a wandering mind. It is embarrassing when the Democratic Party has arrived and wastes precious minutes of the media for slander, said Talon Bala. Bala invited the Democratic Party to come to Parliament on Thursday in order to vote on the draft law of gambling. The Democratic Party has the obligation to come and to vote on the law on gambling at 10 o'clock. Voting will be at noon, so Lul Zimbasha will be able to wake up in time to catch it, added Bala. <coughs> Study fees were the reason for a student protest against Prime Minister Eddie Rama, which was held yesterday. According to them, fees are unaffordable for the poor budgets of Albanian families and that even when compared to neighbouring countries and beyond in Europe, the fees are high. Fees are the concern for the majority of students who say they are forced to work to participate in higher education. While university fees in Albania burden the pockets of students and their families, in many European countries with high economic development, such as Norway, Denmark and Iceland, public education is offered free of charge, even at a tertiary level. Two new wings of the Mother Teresa University Hospital Centre are set to open at the beginning of 2021, offering a new surgical department as well as one for internal diseases. At the start of the proceedings, the head of the government said that the goal is not only improving infrastructure, but also receiving services. With this new and considerable investment we'll bring to the hospital, we guarantee a great quality development and definitely a much more efficient and much more integrated service, said Eddie Rama. Rama added that within the university City Hospital Centre Mother Teresa, a parking place will also be built to avoid the chaos of vehicles. The new surgical hospital will have a capacity of 120 beds and seven operating rooms, while the internal disease hospital is expected to have 345 beds. Rama reiterated once again that salary increases for medical staff will also come into enforce in January 2019. A new cafeteria for persons struggling financially has been opened in Tirana's Unit No. 7 following the reconstruction of three other locations. The opening ceremony was attended by the Mayor of Tirana, Arian Veliai, and the head of the Albanian Red Cross, Uli Alushi, who together served lunch for the elderly and persons with economic difficulties in this area. It is a wonderful tradition and proves what we have long said. No one has a monopoly on, or, on help or solidarity. The state must do its own, the municipality as well, but when everyone acts to contribute, there is no longer a burden. Everything becomes easier. That is the reason why I am blessed today, happy and very pleased that we are sharing this burden of help with our communities, with, of our communities with our friends from the Red Cross. I am glad that you have chosen this community where it is really needed, but there is also much nobility, great dignity, and in the hands of the colleagues and the entire network of volunteers, I'm sure it will be a success story, said Arian Veliai. According to the Mayor of Tirana, today the city has a whole network of community centres and social centres that are ready to cope with any emergency and care for people in need. In Tirana, there are currently seven social centres that offer a warm meal for people with economic disabilities and they can handle up to 800 people a day, a large increase when compared to the 150 that they could accommodate in 2015. Leja celebrated the 147th anniversary of the birth of the poet, intellectual and Albanian politician, Father Gerj Fishta. Publisher Frano Kuli returned to the debate about the lack of reconstruction of the house in the village of Fisht in Leja, where, which is headed towards full degradation. Deputy Mayor of Leja, Alfreda Marku, said Father Gerj Fishta, Fishta's birthday should be remembered every year at a national level based on the values that his figure carries. The municipality of Leja has shown a serious and continued commitment for March 2 to become a national holiday, as Fishta's birthday should be remembered not only locally, but on a national scale, said Alfreda Marku. The artists and the school students, through his poems, brought to memory the life and work of the so-called Albanian Homer with activities beyond the field of letters. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join me again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.